So as a man, by you asking what is one thing that you've done for yourself today, it helps her to feel like she's a, a priority. And by asking her these things regularly, regularly, she's going to start thinking like, what did I do for myself today? Because she know the question is coming. Are you having communication difficulties in your relationship? Are you arguing about the same thing over and over again, expecting different results? Well, this video is for you. It's going to help you tremendously in the area of communication, because once we try these new proven strategies that I use with my clients as well as in my marriage, this is going to help you. Now, let's jump into this, because when we get to a place where we use this new information on a regular basis, it's going to transform your relationship, because I think a lot of times we live life on autopilot. And we're not thinking a lot of times when we're talking, we're just acting out of our emotions and not really processing what our spouse or significant other is saying to us. So let me give you these three tips that's going to help you tremendously. The first one is let me let me give you a scenario real quick. Say you, your significant significant other or your spouse, they have a, a issue with you for whatever it is. Maybe you don't pick your socks up off the floor or maybe you leave dishes in the sink at night. Whatever the scenario is, you know what the issues are in your relationship, right? Give them the space to say what they need to say. And what I mean by that is become a listener. Listen to actually hear, not to respond. Because a lot of times when we get into arguments, we just we just can't wait for them to finish saying what they need to say. And we got our, our comeback. We just can't wait to argue with them. And nobody's really being heard. And I talked about this in a previous video, but one of us are going to have to be uh, more level headed. Now, whoever the level headed one is in a relationship, you have to take the time to listen. OK, I hope that you're the one. Because by listening, it's going to diffuse the argument. It's going to bring the temperature down. A lot of times people say, Sean, why I got to be the, the, the uh, adult in this relationship? Well, maybe you with the wrong person, OK, because you shouldn't always have to be the biggest person in your relationship. Um, and that's another video for another time. So let me say that when they're finished talking and they say what they need to say about how they feel about you because you were listening. Right. You're not responding. You're going to say, tell me more. So that's the first tip. The first one is when they're finished talking, say, tell me more. Now, what's happening is they get to go in depth opposed to this one big emotion like, oh, I'm so mad at you for not picking up your socks when it actually could have been something deeper now that you have told them, tell me more. And when you get to that place and they start to unravel some things and say things to you now, the way you respond, because you're the cooler, you know, cooler heads prevail. You're the one with the cooler head in this process. So when they finish saying what they need to say, now you're going to repeat back to them what they said about you after you said, tell me more. Now, I get it. It's going to take a lot of humility. It's going to take a lot of being humble. And I believe that's one of the keys that can help your relationship prosper is when you have humility and you can be humble. So by doing that, repeat back to them what they said to you. Now you both you have heard what they said because you wasn't arguing. And then they felt heard because you repeated back to them what they said to you. OK, so that's the first one. Make sure that you always say, tell me more. The only way this works is if one of you have a, a cooler demeanor, you know, you, you're a little more laid back and you're willing to listen. That's the only way it's going to work. If you keep arguing, you all going back and forth. You fight fire with fire, the whole house is going to burn down. OK, your relationship will not prosper when you fight fire with fire. The second one is this has helped my marriage tremendously as well. Sometimes this come down to uh, a text message or even if I if I have a chance to talk to my wife on the phone, I will say to her, what can I do today to make you feel loved? Now, I posted that on Twitter one day and it went viral, went crazy. A lot of people was talking about it and people were saying, well, 
if you know if you know her love language or if you know what she needs, why would you ask her? Remember, I ask her regularly. So what she might want today to make her feel love might not be what she need three months from now or what she needed two weeks ago. It just depends. You know, one day you feel like eating hot dogs. One day you feel like eating pizza. You know what I'm saying? It varies. And taking that time to ask it helps prioritize the relationship because when, when she say to you, I'll feel loved if you can pick up the kids from school or if you can take one of the boys to practice or whatever it is. And you do that, that builds up her love tank. That helps tremendously. And when you do those things, she feel like she's being seen. She's feel like she's being heard. So you have to act upon those things. Just don't say it. Just don't say, what can I do today to make you feel loved? And they tell you, and then you don't do it. So it requires a lot of action, but it's a great way to start your morning, especially if, you know, you, you and your spouse work different shifts or y'all work at different times of the day or whatever. Y'all don't see each other as much during the day. It's a great way to kick off a conversation and how to start your day. What can I do today to make you feel loved? The last one is this is when it's like pillow talk time. Y'all both in the bed chilling. I don't know if y'all do uh, pillow talk at night, but it's a great way to form intimacy. And I'm not even talking about sex. I'm just talking about being just intimate, just talking. Ask her, this is this is one for the fellas. Ask her, what is one thing you've done for yourself today? I think that helps make her feel loved. It helped make her to realize that she's a priority as well. That she's just not somebody that's doing everything for everybody that's making dinner for the kids and making sure she has sex with you and making sure she do all these things and neglect herself. Because a lot of times women get lost in their marriage or in their relationship. So as a man, by you asking what is one thing that you've done for yourself today, it helps her to feel like she's a, a priority. And by asking her these things regularly, regularly, she's going to start thinking like, what did I do for myself today? Because she know the question is coming. And it doesn't have to be a grand thing. She could just maybe want to get away from you and the kids. Who knows? She might just want to go to Starbucks and get her a coffee and just stare out the window for, for 20 minutes. Maybe she want to get her nails done. Maybe she want to get her toes done, hair, whatever. But by asking her those things regularly, she's going to be reminded how important she is in this family, because I think sometimes we don't show our appreciation enough to our women or our wives. Yeah, I know we have Mother's Day and stuff like that, but doing this on a consistent basis is going to make her feel loved. So I believe those three things, if you implement them in your relationship today, it's going to help your relationship tremendously because you can't keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. I always give the scenario of the dance. If you and your significant other or your spouse are always arguing because you know what's going to set them off, that's the dance that you do. She automatically know you're going to stonewall. She automatically know you're going to leave out the house when you start arguing. So you have trained your spouse or your significant other to think one way because this is how they respond to adverse situations. But if you're willing to change the dance and I hold men to a higher standard because if we are called to be leaders, right, we have to be the sacrificial lamb and set the example. I always ask men, is she better or bitter since being with you? So you have to make sure that you change the dance by doing these three steps, by changing the way the dance operate in the house. And by doing so, she's forced to change. It's going to do either one or two things. Either it's going to make the relationship stronger or it's going to end up breaking a relationship where you might be too much for this person and that's okay, but you have to be willing to change the dance. That way you can do something different and it enhance the relationship. Hey, if you've been, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with someone, maybe, you know, someone who's having communication issues in their relationship and they just need a little tweaking Share this video with them. Make sure you leave a, a comment below. I would love to hear which strategy of these three you plan on implementing in your relationship today. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you 
hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.